Welcome to eTalk, the first European talk show that is designed to give young people a platform to speak up, share their ideas and their concerns. And um, thanks to Esteem, the European Students of Industrial Engineering and Management, you have been given the possibility to record the talk show at their council meeting. We are in Riga right now, where they are holding that council meeting. Europe is not only a great idea, it is a fact. About 740 million people share the same piece of earth and everybody is well advised to live in peace with each other. Since there were a lot of initiatives against other countries in Europe and extreme parties gain more and more votes, we think that we need to bring European people together and talk about their feelings. At the first e-talk, we would like to make the following case. The European future is dependent on the, well on the well-being of Europe and how we educate and train our people. That is why we would like to discuss today happiness and education in Europe. And first, we would like to introduce our guests. I'm one of the hosts, Sebastian Katzung. That is Luis Gudinho, and he is also a host of the talk show. I will, I will introduce our guests. Uh, this, this time, at for this e-talk, we have invited a group of students from uh, STEAM, European Students of Industrial Engineering and Management, and I will introduce each one of them. We have the good luck of having a very diverse group with us here today. So, to my left we have uh, Sorana. She's half Austrian, half Romanian right now. Yes, exactly. Yes, very good. Then we have Jelle. Jelle, our Dutch, our Dutch guests. Uh, then we have Oli from Finland, we have Marcia from Portugal, and we have Jules from France. I would, start, I would like to start the discussion by asking the following question. Do you think that education is something that is, has a role for yourselves only, or do you think that the, the role of education is for the good of society, that it's, it, it's a tool for us to serve society? Well, I think, I think it's a bit of both. Because first you need to shape people and individuals to have an impact on society. If I look at myself and my personality, I would say that I have a big need for education. So I would see it as an individual need. But I think at the same time, if we look at esteem, it has a big impact on the society. because. What we do matters. So, when you talk about education in general, you have a project in a team, right? And that is called Vision. And can you elaborate on that a little bit more and what it's for? And because, I mean, you train people to be prepared for the future with a vision, right? With a vision project. So, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah. So, Vision is a project that is now 20, around 22 years old. Um, and it started. I think as the, the name itself says, to be uh, a project that has a vision, that is bringing something different to the table. Um, now this year we had food from soil to shelf as a topic, and we aim at um, having several events throughout Europe that actually teach people in that topic. Um, usually the purpose of vision is to have is that students that participate in these events can learn about something that is related to their field of studies, but at the same time they wouldn't learn in their universities. So it's a different type of education. And do you think that people who attend these vision events um, do that for themselves in order to educate themselves? Or do they have this greater picture in mind that they actually do something really good for you? I think it depends on the topic. Um, and this year specifically, I think many people did it because they thought that it was a trendy topic, that um, European Union was somehow focused on that, and so they also wanted to bring something to the table. But I guess it's mostly because they find the topic specifically or it's somehow more attractive to themselves. Okay. Jules, you, you, were, you, you were a TED speaker recently and, and you also took the lead in the academic days, an initiative, a project from his team as well. 
Yeah. And it's also related to education, right? Academic days. What is the difference between that approach and vision? How do you feel that it's, it contributes or that it brings value to the people that uh, join that project? Well, the Academic Days project aims at uh, bringing the education closest to people uh, coming from the best universities on a related topic. So, we try to connect, to democratize uh, education uh, for everybody um, in Europe, directly from the best source. Um, the difference uh, in academic days may be that we also uh, are very concerned about the way we have fun during the event, the way we synergize uh, all the activities, so the education process uh, is seen as a whole process during the event. For example, also including every day, um, every night after the day, some space for reflection on the learned um, ideas and concepts. Mm, coming into the, the why we learn, why do we learn also together as a group. I actually have a difficult question for you. Yeah. So, um, what do you think is more important, academical knowledge or like daily, daily life knowledge? So we go to the universities in Europe, wherever, and we learn a lot of uh, academic content at our universities. But what we kind of lose track on is yeah, how to pay taxes, how to do stuff like that. So why would you think is it important to have this project, Academic Days, to even put more academic content to the people? Well, Academic Days project want to bring value to people who are, who are interested in it, but it's not only about what you learn there, it's also the way you learn it which makes you think about how you also study in your university. And this international um, atmosphere in which you learn is also the main, um, one of the main uh, important points mm -hmm. of uh, this event, about all the events we have in STM actually. Um, we are part of this European network because we want to do our life in this international uh, way. Uh, we were just talking uh, with the leaders of STEAM and found that STEAM is this cocktail of uh, international uh, uh, experiences that you can actually follow your whole life. It's just the first door to this international network, international way of living. Oli, I understand that you have been in several several countries already and that you have been also uh, active in several local groups of this team, correct? Yeah, so originally I come from Finland and after doing my bachelor in Finland for three years I moved on to Germany and there I spent one year first as an exchange student and then another half a year doing an internship and after this year in Germany I moved on to Sweden for my master. Very good, because I would like to take something that Jules mentioned. You mentioned that Academic Days it strives to democratize a little bit education. If you try and take the best universities in specific areas and bring students to learn from the best. Yes. Do you also feel that, Ali, do you also feel that there's a very big difference in the quality and the, the way of approach that different universities have, that education is is dealt with in the different places? Yes, well, there are definitely uh, different kind of conversation on between different countries. For example, if you look at Germany, it's mostly about learning things by heart. And when you, if you look at Nordic countries, it's more about doing things in practice. What would you think prepares you better for the future? What would you think should be the general approach of a university? Uh, well, of course you need to know the things that you're working with, but I also think that you need to be able to use the knowledge in practice, to be able to create value for society. And what do you think is more fun to do? Uh, well, I personally enjoy doing things in practice, like doing, uh, working in groups, like what we do in this organization of ours as team all the time. So what I understand of uh, the way that you kind of study is that you talk a lot, right? Yes, we have lots of group works. Okay, group works. And do you actually also have results in an academic way? 
Ah, uh, yes, we have uh, certain hands in that we have to, yeah, give to our professors on a weekly basis, mostly. Okay. Okay. So you? Would... Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking that like, I like to practice uh, to learn concretely, but I also like um, to talk about concepts uh, a lot. Um, only intellectual. But if it's only if it's only intellectual uh, concepts, then you don't really see where you are getting at. So I think it would it should be a mixture all the time of intellectual talks, group exercise, etc. A diversity of of pedagog pedagogy. And then, in order to learn that, would you recommend to people who are watching uh, to go abroad for studying, to go to different universities? Obviously, obviously, because <laughs> if you. Um, if you make the can canals of learning uh, more diverse, uh, it seems obvious to me that you will learn differently, so more. But if you, but if you train all students like that, that they are trained diverse, think about everything a lot, don't you think that companies will have troubles find people that are just willing to uh, work at one place, one city, just doing the day-to-day -day job? For international people who want to study abroad, it's generally to, to work in an international company where it is important to understand the others around you. So for, for this purpose, it's interesting to study abroad. People who study in one country and want to stay in one country, that's fine as well. They would get a job in a more uh, local uh, company, mm -hmm. I think. Do you think that people that don't travel are less happy than those who travel and learn abroad? Um, it's a very interesting question. I think I should think a lot to answer. But I think in the end it all depends on what you really want to. If you can be totally fine uh, being born in one city and stay there for all your life. But it depends if you want to. Yeah, look, what, what I understood is that you, have, um, you are the leader of the education initiative. Yes. So what is actually education? And uh, how do you agree or disagree with uh, truth? Well, education are, or is what I would say the, the tools you're using to, uh, to transfer knowledge. And knowledge can be as broad as skills, so that means hard skills, just doing the calculations, or soft skills, uh, such as, for instance, presenting or uh, learning how to work together in a, in a very diverse group. So what, what actually do you do in that? It was to assess education from different perspectives. Okay. <laughs> because we see that uh, yeah, it's done differently uh, throughout Europe and we think it's very valuable for students to get to know universities in other countries, to compare education systems. Um, and this can help them to, um, to actually place their own curriculum in the right perspective. And can, it might even help them to think, um, yeah, to, to compare, for instance, programs abroad, to find the style, the education style that matches you. So would you think then that the uh, duty of a student is to inform herself or himself before you actually study about how you want to be trained in university or is it more like the obligation of the state or the governments to tell people how they should be trained or educated? Um, I personally think it should be uh, partially, it should be your own responsibility that the state should uh, set up the structure in a way that, that gives you access to information if you need it. Okay. But then I'm curious, do you do you all feel like you were prepared to make that kind of decision or to, to take that kind of responsibility when the moment came? Do you feel that you were educated on a, on high school for, in high school, for example? Do you feel that you, you were prepared for that as well? Or do you, do you feel that your parents gave you that part of education? I, yeah, I honestly uh, don't think that I was prepared for that. In my personal life, um, I made these steps which bring me where I am today and I decided to join this team and continue in that network but 
uh, I think it, it's, it's not an easy choice to make at the beginning and we are not pushed in that direction, at least from what I've seen and in France. Um, the education in high school or often at university is still uh, rather conservative and not open to evolution of uh, new, pedag new pedagogy, for example. I'm curious to ask you something, too. I want to hear your opinion as well. And I would like to ask you a question at the same time as well, which is, uh, you, were, you were once also project leader of the magazine, and I believe that you are a group of very lucky people, because you had the chance to travel, go abroad, make friends from other countries, but a lot of people don't have that, those means. A lot of people in Europe are, don't, do not have the possibility to travel and in your case you were managing a channel of communication basically yes. <clears throat> so besides besides the the decisions on how how you did, how how you managed your own education i would like to know as well how do you see that the communication channels that exist today can have an influence on that very interesting question um, actually to to go back to his point yeah. Um, I think even though universities and, and parents and friends and environments might try to shape us in a certain way, it's still very difficult because they don't know what they are shaping us for. Education, how it used to be done in, let's say, the 60s, had no clue that they are preparing people that are currently leading the world. So they are preparing the people for the current times, but they have no idea what the current times are going to look like. They had absolutely no idea how it's going to develop, the fact that the East is going to combine to, to West. They didn't expect globalization in all these aspects. They didn't expect the uh, um, uh, Internet to arise to such a level. So I think it's also very difficult to ask ourselves, what are we preparing for? Because also, when we're going to keep working in 30 years, we have no idea how the future is going to look in 30 years. So I agree with, with his choice of actually trying things out. Because having a very broad perspective um, might make you at least understand the systems easier. So from the perspective of if it, this should be a personal decision to go and study abroad or go and know cultures abroad by, let's say, esteem events or any kind of other events, um, I think it should indeed be a mixture of how the government pushes you and family and environment and friends. Um, I've seen that some universities took the step further to actually um, make, make it mandatory for students to take at least one semester abroad. So this direction I think is being shaped and more and more universities might actually make this mandatory within the curriculum that students make uh, at least one semester abroad. So this should definitely con continue in this direction. But I would even take it one step further and I would actually make it mandatory that universities um, do their research properly and analyze and make possibly good databases of organizations that exist worldwide or Europe-wide or whatever on which level and make it mandatory to be socially active and let's say voluntarily active as well. Um, I also did, um, I also have experience of abroad so not just from the country where I was born in but and yes I did learn a lot but I think through Steam I managed to learn even more so even if the university would have pushed me, which it, it didn't, it was just my choice, to go and study abroad, I still would have needed, in my opinion, this, this multicultural experience and getting a little bit, a bit piece of everything. Yes, I got to know one culture, but through Esteem I got to know a little bit of 30 cultures, which I think is going to be very essential in, for my future. I would like to follow up on that, on all what you just have said a little bit and come back to a little bit to the, the to the power that you as students have in Europe. So how do you see the yeah, power of a student association to influence the content of academic the academic content of universities? And what do you specifically do in a team to maybe change something? I think at this point, since we don't know concretely what we could change, a very good possibility would be to, to just share our stories, our experiences, and, and possibly inspire more people to, to take the same steps. As long as um, most of the things that don't get achieved in the world, I think, and, or don't work out, are due to mentalities, or uh, people not uh, 
having a sense of community or not having a sense of, or, or the feeling of, of, that a certain idea should actually uh, take place in the end. So if a little bit of knowledge sharing is being done here and there, I think this could, this could contribute on a, on a wider scale. Mm -hmm. So I think it should mm -hmm. start from, from the bottom for sure. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing in this team is we are a network of students, but as well connected to professors. Um, so we is there, there is how do you do that? How, how are you connected to professors? Uh, we have a network, uh, a three-dimensional network with the um, estimers, the alumni estimers, and the professor of IAM. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know precisely how it works, but we are in contact with those interested professors um, in what we do. And so there is always a need, uh, there is always a gap between the need and the answer to a need. Mm -hmm. in, would it be in education or any other uh, areas? And we, esteemers, show what is the gap uh, between actual education and what would, what would the students really want. And so the IEM professors who see what we need, they can push uh, the change in the universities. So it's, it's all connected. They can we are kind of the entrepreneurs of the change of education. And I would ask you on that, because you as the vision project uh, leader, um, you work with companies actually, and uh, you choose companies probably wisely that uh, people attend at the events in order to get to know them. And how do you choose the companies that students of esteem uh, are going to visit? I think usually you the, you don't need to filter your choice because the way that companies receive you and the way they perceive our organization already shows a lot from their side. Okay. So usually when a company wants to cooperate with us in any way, either financially or just providing us some content or whatever, it already shows that they're open-minded and they actually want to make a contrib to contribute to our association. And do you see that there might be a chance that uh, students also influence the companies that they visit? Yes, that is for sure. Um, not only on the events that his team organizes, but also on local, more local events. Um, we see that now companies are more open to opportunities for short-term internships and just case study solving, etc. And that means that they want fresh opinion, they want fresh minds and not the people that have been working there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the fact that you're involved in STEAM has somehow uh, compromised your academic su success as well? I would, I would say that um, actually being active in STEAM keeps me motivated during my studies as well. It's, for me it's a big mo motivator and it really inspires me to uh, meet international people and to, uh, to see what's going on in the country. So in a way you believe that it brings sense to what you learn? Yes. It provides me with the, the necessary context I need. How do you manage to keep in touch with each other? How does this work? How do you manage to keep learning if you don't always meet? How often do you all meet? Maybe only you have some insights well, on that. For example, in addition, projects they have Skype chats with each other on a regular basis and they exchange emails with each other. And that's a very, very common way of communication within the student organization. Okay. So I, also, yeah. Continue, I also see that it's not important to be in touch with each other at all times. Um, I think at some point you also need to uh, take a step back, relax, reflect, and think a little bit of what you learned. Because if you're always with each other, it also becomes, again, normal and not challenging. So for me, I would say that it's also important to be alone or to go back home at some point. And then when we meet each other, we're always different at, at every time. Yeah, we call STEAM a playground often, so it's interesting to come to this playground, have your experiences, um, connect with these people, and then come back to reality, or let's say uh, our countries. Um, so then we can reflect, yes, and, and come back when we need more, uh, come back to STEAM when we need more. Yes, I also think that this, this break is most of the times necessary. Um, not just from the point of view of reflecting, which is indeed um, true, but in the same way as we also learn for university, I think um,
being constantly in a room with a professor doesn't bring the entire knowledge. A part of the knowledge is also at home when the student reviews all the materials. Only on a wider scale, this is done on a personal level with people and exchanging experiences. In, in the classroom in the university, this is done most of the time, let's say, via a book or some slides. But uh, this is more a more personal exchange of information, which also needs its breaks, of course. I would like to um, move the move the uh, discussion a little bit in the in the direction of how is education linked to happiness, actually, and how do you like what you do? And I would like to start with that by just asking every single one of you the same question, and that would be. Um, what did you want to be when you grow up, when you were a child? So Anna, would you please start? What was your vision? What was your dream? To be honest, I, I didn't really know as a kid what I wanted to be. And uh, sometimes um, my own opinion was distorted by the people around me. So uh, some people, uh, after seeing my performance in school, they would have said, uh, yeah, you would do great as a doctor. and then. Me as a small kid would say, yeah, it's true, I want to be a doctor, but actually I had no clue what I wanted to do. The most appealing sounded to, to do engineering. I, I was indeed um, good at, let's say, um, subjects like maths, physics, and, and so on. So if you're good at but maths, physics, and languages, you didn't want to become an astronaut or something? It's actually very difficult because um, I think my, my passions and what I would have liked to, to be good at don't relate in any way to any kind of fields of study. Okay. So in my opinion, it doesn't really matter what you're studying as long as as you understand more of the world itself. And then that you can specialize in the field of study. That is a very interesting thesis. And do you agree? And if you agree, why do you agree? I agree with that to a certain extent. The most important thing I would say is that you're passionate about what you do but we also have to be honest that uh, yeah, if you, for instance, if you want to find a job, yeah, it's just easier if you have a technical background in general. Um, so yeah, and that also contributes to happiness that you have, uh, yeah, that you're able to find a job to live your life. Okay, so um, being linked to education in general, um, security is very important. When you choose uh, studies, it shouldn't, be, shouldn't you be emotional about what you? What do you do? Yeah, not, you should not really be emotional about it, but security is Im important in the sense that at the age you choose your studies, yeah, you're, you're quite young, so you want to be in a sort of safe environment, and from there uh, you want to try out new things and look further and further as you go. What did you want to become when you were a child? Well, um, when I was really young, I wanted um, to become a you call this a firefighter? Firefighter. Um, but that faded away quite soon. I don't know, maybe when I was ten or something. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then for a long time I just had no clue what I wanted to be. Um, so yeah, that's also why I ended up studying something which is a bit mixed. I mean, industrial engineering and management. Obviously, you combine. Mm. Um, yeah, a, a passion for technical skills or not for, for these technical things with something that yeah, you, you can apply it in a business. It's also what I see for instance when I look at my study mates, these are people that are also in a way commercially driven and uh, also want to get things done, not only being the scientist in his lab. Yeah. And this combination, that really made sense for me. That was like a good promotion for the studies. <laughs> So, Oli, what did you want to become? Quick. Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a detective, uh, solving detective. crime cases, catching criminals. In <laughs> face, I wanted to be a vet, an animal doctor, because okay. I really like animals. But then, during my high school time, I started to grow interest in uh, engineering and economics, and then I had part time choosing between those two, and this is how I ended up studying IEM. Alright, interesting. Marcia, what did you want to become? I was just thinking about it and I think I always wanted to, in my children, childish language, I wanted to be a boss. 
A boss? Yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know what you're talking about. Actually. <laughs> so you like to tell people what to do? <laughs> yes, 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 I do. I, do. I think I always like that. <laughs> but why I chose industrial engineering? I think. Um, I think the question is not why I chose industrial engineering because we. How many people are still in their area after five or six years? And in the end, it's just how you start. It doesn't mean that you will do that for the rest of your life. Okay. So you basically don't really study in order to be happy while you study, but it's an investment in the future that you can choose whatever you want to. No, actually I think it's the other way around. Okay. I study this because now I'm happy. But okay, at some point good. if I'm not, I don't think I will be an industrial engineer. Okay. Or something else. Okay. What do you think about that? Sure. Um, about my what I ever wanted to be. Yeah, also, also that, yeah? yeah, and what Marcia just yeah. said. For that, I totally agree that you don't have to make plans very far of where you want to go. As long as you like what you do today, it is totally fine. And then you always contribute uh, your way to, to the big thing. As for what I always wanted to do, I, I can't recall a, a proper profession I, I wanted. I was always passionate about languages, sports, education because I have both my parents teachers and um, I was passionate as well, always as well uh, for understanding the world around me. And so I always wanted to create, create projects and that's, I think that is uh, the fire of entrepreneurship. But, so I chose um, industrial engineering because it was the broadest. Uh, Topic, it could uh, keep all the doors open to me, and I, I said like, okay, maybe it's a security, but until now I like it, so it's still a concrete uh, step. Okay, interesting. And um, I would like to ask another question like that and go the other way around, but make it short. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, um, what would be the basic the, or the the main lesson that would you would teach your children? Okay. It popped in my mind is learn how to learn. Learn how to learn. Yeah. Marcia. I would say don't take yourself too seriously. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't let others tell you what you should do. You should make your own decisions. Yeah. Awesome. I would say develop yourself by keeping by being in challenging environments. I would say um, discover a lot and uh, Inform yourself a lot, and just don't lose this uh, the adventure spirit and the willing to to get more knowledgeable about everything. Spirit, child in you. I would like to ask you a similar question. In one sentence, what makes you happy? What makes me happy? What gives you meaning in life? Yes. Can we be very honest? Yes. Okay. You can be very honest. Okay. So I can say my question. So it's not even related to education or the university or what you do for a living. No. Yeah, that's good. For me, I think it's um, the environment and the people that I live in. They give the direction and meaning of my life. And as long as uh, I'm content with these two at the same time, then I think I, I can define my environment as being happy. Yeah. Not my environment, my surroundings. That concern the environment and the people at the same time. What about the three guys? Don't be shy. I know it's very hard <laughs> to put your feelings out, but... <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. But um, what, I, what I think is that the environment is really important and for me that means that I really like to be in an environment where I uh, get challenged so that you, you keep developing sort of more or less. Okay, Pauli? Yeah, I think would be consist of two factors. Firstly, the relationships that you have with other people. And secondly, like it's already mentioned, that you actually like what you're doing. For me, I have a big introjection in my education about contributing. And so I feel what makes, really makes me happy is having the feeling that I contribute to the world my way. That's what's important. I don't, just don't want to change the world, I want to contribute my way. Now, based on that, how do you see that Europe is going to change in the future? How do you see that education might change in the future? 
the education in Europe yes. can change by say customize the education which which is what happened for example uh, in Canada as I think you can choose your mm, material your courses much more and find it more adequate to yourself you learn what you want to learn I would say that uh, you would get educated by more sources than just your professor Yeah, education can grow up critical thinkers who can question the environment around themselves and get rid of those things that are not good and create new things that are actually bring actually value for all of us in society. Yeah, I would say that um, we're just getting started with um, the innovation in education in the sense that I think the invention of internet and locals flying that is really important but these are really important factors uh, for for instance policy making but also students to get together uh, to compare different European cultures in order to innovate in education and yeah, if we manage to take the best practices from every country and, um, in, yeah, and improve the general level of education in Europe uh, continuously, then I think uh, Europe would be a really a better place. This is the power of diversity for evolution. <laughs> by, the, by the way, we, we're all, always talking about Europe as a yes. thing. What do you consider as Europe? What, what is Europe? Is that like a place with borders or is that a, a place of a certain mindset or what is Europe? I think Europe is a very abstract concept and uh, I think Europe is defined by the people that define themselves as Europeans. So as long as a person considers him or herself a European, it doesn't have to be an EU or a non-EU member, I think that's Europe. Is there a difference between Southern Europe and Northern Europe in that matter? I think that's very stereotypical and um, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I think there there might be some differences, but each individuals in each country are different again. So um, I think you can still find very similar personalities and very similar people, even in completely different corners of Europe or the world, with completely different backgrounds, but still similar at the same time. So. From the individual aspect, I don't think they're different, but as a whole, sometimes they are interpreted as, as being different. And, and these, this is how the, these stereotypes arise. Yeah. But then I'm curious, what, what unites European people? What is it that unites them? Is it common history? Is it the view on life? Is it cultural values, background? What is it? I think there are differences is what sticks them together. I think the definition of being from Europe is that we care more about different things. We want to know what's going on in the next border. We want to know what's going, what's going on in the north, in the south, in the center. And that's what makes us a little bit different from other parts of the world. I don't see Europe as different as any other part of the world. It's just our history and our geography which make us closer. That's why we have our network in this continent. But actually, I don't like to take Europe or South America different. For me, it's all about the world. And if our network has these pro-European values, it's actually pro-human values. And if the other country would be closer, then they would be also included in the network. So what would you your vision be for Europe or let's say the world then? I don't know. <laughs> That's fair enough. No. Yeah. Okay. My vision. Yeah, I think... Should there be a vision for Europe? I think this vision is, is hard to define because um, we, we are very similar but also very different and uh, that makes setting a common vision also difficult. But thinking about having a common vision is also exciting because of these challenges. 
So, looking at my experiences in Europe, in Steam, or in other parts of the world, I don't see much difference between people. Okay, there is this historical and cultural differences, but in the end we are all humans. And I don't see why we couldn't uni unite in this. I think if we look at the history, there have been like on a regular basis such phases that we've been really fighting with each other in Europe. And if you if we have a look at Europe, Europe at today, there are uh, people are really striving for peace, trying to come up, come along with each other. So maybe the definition of European could be a person who actually wants to come along with all these different nationalities yeah. in this continent. Very good. So, maybe you will have a final question? I have here one question that I would like to see your reaction on. Which is that uh, there was a study not so long ago, maybe one, two years ago, that said that uh, education actually does not contribute to general happiness. That there is no difference if you are educated or not. And I would like to, I would like to see you and understand what is your opinion on this. If you believe this study, because there are studies that show the, the exact opposite as well, of course. But I would like to see what is your opinion on this. I think the background, the initial background in which a person was raised plays a very important key role here. Uh, let's say that a child is born in, in a family of teachers or in a family with uh, really high educational degrees. Um, then in the beginning it might be very challenging for a person to define happiness without education or very low education. Um, but as long as, as a person finds its own way and is happy with what he or she is doing, maybe he or she just wants to live in, uh, in a rainforest completely isolated for, for the world and for the entire life, if, if that's what defines that person as, as being happy and without any kind of education, then I think that can also work out. I think that it depends on how you see happiness. And if you see happiness as being happy about what, you do, what you're doing, then education contributes in, the way, in a way that it gives you more opportunities and it opens you more doors to, to do what you want. Because depending on where you're living at the moment or your background, without education you may not be able to access some things that you want to do and in that way education can contribute to your happiness. And also um, I think that education is also just some, not something for everyone. Some people uh, really like to work in a, yeah, in a more physical uh, way and, uh, that, yeah, and they, they are just more happy to do that. And maybe we students, uh, we like to, uh, we like this kind of approach better. I think it all comes to how you define education. Maybe in French it has a bit different meaning, and it depends if you say it is formal education or not. Because let's imagine uh, a village or an island which has been isolated from the rest of the world since for a long time. They, live very, they would live, for example, very close to the nature, would not have all our technologies, but would be fine with it, would be happy with it. That's, uh, that's, but they would still have education, their way, in their traditions. Yeah, so my personal opinion is that indeed you don't need education to be happy. My own grandparents, they didn't have any kind of education and they were still very, very happy in their lives, I believe. But I agree with Marcy, but Marcy just said that education provides you with a wide variety of opportunities in this world. And uh, yeah, I would say that it, in that way it definitely is a factor in, in your personal happiness. I also think it's, um, it's very important on how each person defines his or her values because, um, as, as Marcy said, yes, it opens more opportunities. But some people are sometimes scared that the more they know, the sadder they get. So maybe th this is also a, a very important aspect, like how does 
reaching more opportunities and being more knowledgeable affects your your mental health because to some it might go downwards so I really think it's it's something to adapt to each personality <laughs> So, I hope that you got some insights about the feeling stores of European students um, in that setting, all studying industrial engineering and management. And uh, thanks for watching the first European talk show. And thanks all about for to our guests. And thanks to the whole team who put everything together. The next e-talk will be recorded in one month in Eindhoven. The Netherlands. So if you have any feedback or would like us to come to an international meeting of yours, don't hesitate to write us an email and stay tuned and check out our website. Thanks for watching.